Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. I got a special guest on here. I got a, um, I got, uh, uh, sorry, Rob Edwards here, and he's from the Missoula Agent Services, and he's going to be talking about Medicare and Part Part D and Advantage. A little bit more about this uh, later in the show. He'll talk a little bit more about if you're 65 and over, how you can get involved with that. So let's talk about some um, things that are happening with the weather. I got uh, d a new dub and stuff. I got some whole bunch of other cool things happening today in the show. But let's talk about some weather. It is currently 37 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 49 deg 43 <laughs> degrees. Sorry, excuse me. Your low is going to be 37. Your high is going to be 50 by Thursday. So it's going to be a little bit warmer, but it's pretty much going to be rainy, uh, wet all week long. So, hey, it's the work week, so it's in the middle of the week. You know, you might as well stay indoors while it's all rainy and stuff. So hopefully it'll clear up by this weekend. But it's still going to be cold because, people, it's getting colder outside. Um, let's talk about some news that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Just wanted to let you guys know that former advisor to President Donald Trump will be uh, visiting here, Missoula, at a conference at the University of Montana. Steve Bannon will be the keynote speaker at the event at the 15th International Conference on Advances in Computer Elec Entertainment Technologies. So like social media, Twitter, and all that stuff about how... Uh, he was able to help uh, Trump's campaign and be elected in the first place. So he'll be talking about that. I'm actually, that's very interesting to see how it kind of looked. But of course, he left the White House after a year and was later fired as executive chairman of uh, Breitbart News, a far-right website for comments criticizing Trump in a book that was called Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House. The University of Montana is hosting this event December 10th through the 14th, and it will be at the University Center. In other university news, Doc, uh, um, Dean Stephen Calm confirmed Monday that he will step out of the leadership role of the College of Visual and Performing Arts and return to teaching music full-time. After meeting with the provost and president of the university where they discussed Mr. Calm to step down after he rallied the community-led protests against a dramatic budget cut that placed at-risk accredited degree programs in music and would diminish or terminate the arts. But the university said that they were never doing that, just doing an overhaul in the budget where we would cut a lot of the uh, cut a lot of the uh, money with the programs while keeping a lot of the programs accredited. So after the university distributed a newsletter uh, later on the September 24th titled Dean Reacts Warning About Deep Cuts to UM Arts, um, in his prepared statement, Calm said his earlier fears about reductions were unfounded and the budget targets were more closely aligned with the plan that was presented last spring. Calm will relinqu relinquish his title at the end of de December. In state news, a bomb squad out of Billings uh, um, building KTVQ news station uh, was detonated uh, by the bomb squad out of uh, Billings Police Department. According to Jason Gardner, it was a hoax device, but they were, uh, but was made to appear threatening. Pol uh, police found religious writing on the tote, uh, which which held the device and w devices, because there's two totes, uh, and saw that it could be consistent with an IED. But it actually wasn't. The whole idea is it was a, a man who had a... Um, Police located and interviewed a 40-year-old Billings man who was not, whose name was not released before taken to a Billings clinic for mental health treatment on Tuesday after press release from Billings Police Department. Uh, Brandon Woolley stated, no criminal, criminal charges will be filed and uh, uh, Billings Police Department consider the case closed according to the press release. The suspected devices were homemade lightsabers and um, he said he never had any intention to disrupt or cause any alarm. Um, in the press release, he also left the tote in the Q2 building because he knew that they had cameras and he felt as though that his property would be safe because he was a, a th um, subject of theft in the in the past as well. In national news, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, James Whitey uh, Bulger, uh, uh, Bulger uh, who rose to power as a secret informant to FBI and uh, counted the FBI agents who... Um, um, who helped him get away with murder and extortion, was found dead in prison. He was 89 years old. Of course, if you uh, don't know who this was, the Black Mass starring Johnny Depp portrayed the late mobster back in 2015. Basically, Whitey uh, Bulger was a gangster who used the FBI to get away with murder and get rid of the competition through helping the FBI while at the same time helping himself. Uh, 
Freddie Geese was uh, being looked at for the man behind Bugler's death. Geese is 51, and he's serving a life sentence since 2015. He was among the group convicted in 2003 murders of Massachusetts mob boss Alfredo Big Al Bruno and his associate um, Gary Westerman. He was also uh, tied to shooting um, of a New York union boss in the same year. At, this, at the time of his death, Bugler was serving two consecutive life sentences. He died at Hazleton Federal Prison in Brewston Mills, West Virginia. So that's kind of what's happening in the news right now. You can find out more information and the full story about Whitey Bugler at NPR.org and beyond. So I have a guest on, so I'm not going to make him wait any longer. So here is an art clip from the Gallery of the Visual. Actually, no, this is the Missoula Art Museum, and it will be happening until the beginning of December. So you get a whole month to check it out at the Missoula Art Museum. Free expression, free admission. So you can check that out. And when I come back, I'll have Rob Edwards on talking about Medicare. Hey guys, we're back here with Rob Edwards, and he is the uh, community service director out of the uh, Missoula Agent Services. And you're here to talk about Medicare, Medicare D Part D, and Medicare uh, Advantage. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. October fifteenth through December seventh is Medicare Open Enrollment time every year, and it's time for people to take a look at what their Medicare Part D and Medicare Advantage programs and plans are looking like, and uh, take a look and see if they can save some money or if they should be investing in a different plan. Cool. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier about uh, some people who don't sign up for uh, these programs uh, as they become of age, basically. Sure. So when people turn 65, they have the opportunity to join Medicare. And Medicare is an optional piece that you sign up for when you are ready to. If you have other coverage, it may be in your best interest or may not be in your best interest. The piece of it that gets important is that if people don't sign up for Part D and don't have creditable coverage, they can end up paying a penalty later in life when they do decide to sign up. So it's important to get in and, and take the new to Medicare class, which is offered 12 months a year at Missoula Aging Services, when you're getting ready to sign up for Medicare. And then once again, in October to December, take a look every year at your Part D plan. And if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, it's very important to sign up and look at it again. Cool. And the uh, two workshops that are coming up this year, at the end, towards the end of this year, of course, are November 12th and uh, December 6th. And Correct. it caps off about 25 people. I, that number, it's going to depend on demand. It really does. It really does. Yeah. So it's one of the ways that we can help people sign up and get their plans checked. So the first thing to do is to call Missoula Aging Services. You'll get our call center. Uh, it's manned uh, between 8 and 5 every day. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is they'll take your information and send out a letter to you to get some information on what drugs you're taking, what Medicare plan you're on, and all that. You return that plan to us. We have some volunteers who go through, enter your drugs onto the plan finder, and find out, well, are you better off with a different plan than you're currently on? If you're good to go, they'll send you a letter saying, hey, just stay where you're at and you're good. If not, they'll call and let you know that it's time to schedule an appointment, and we can either schedule an appointment one-on-one -on -one with you, or you can come to one of our open enrollment classes and sign up that way. Because the biggest thing that I wanted to harp on is that this is a, a financially saving opportunity for a lot of people, and 
uh, with Medicare, and it's like um, a lot of people are spending way too way more money than they could be, which is why Medicare uh, plan Part D and all this stuff could also help them as they transition. Absolutely. So every year, Medicare plans, Medicare Part D plans will change their formulary. So they'll change what drugs they cover at what tier, and they'll change what the costs are. Uh, if you sign up, stay with where you're at, and one of your drugs drops off formulary, or something else happens to the plan that makes it different, you can end up paying an awful lot of money. We saved uh, our seniors uh, about $522,000 last year. Wow. Just with Part D and Medicare Advantage savings. And those are savings that if they hadn't come in and looked at the plans, they wouldn't have saved. So it's, it can be a pretty significant uh, funding source and can yeah. help cover some other costs. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you're wondering why one of your uh, um, pills are costing maybe like, like, like 30, 40 bucks a pill. You know, there's some medications out there. They're very expensive, and while we don't give them any medical advice, what we can do is identify the drugs that are costing yes. the money, and maybe suggest that they talk to their provider about whether or not this is the one they need to be on, or if there's a lesser cost. No medical advice, but we can sure help no. them with finances. Yes, it's all about financing and uh, the right kind of medication for the right finances. It's not about saying I was like, oh, you should be taking this blood, uh, this. Um, blood pressure medicine rather no. than blood medicine. We're not telling no. you what you should take and what you shouldn't take. We're just telling you is that these are the uh, medication that are covered under Medicare. Correct. Under your particular plan. Every plan, every, every provider has a different plan. And we're just trying to make sure we find the right one for you. Cool. And it also depends on what pharmacy you go to. Yep. So you may be able to see that, okay, if I go to pharmacy A, my cost is going to be this. If I go to pharmacy B, it's going to be different. It makes a difference depending on the plan. Yep. So it's a good thing just to come in, uh, have this work done, take a look at it. If you're good to go, we don't recommend any change. You don't need to do anything. You don't even need to come in. Uh, but if there is a change that should be made that could save you some money, we really suggest you come on in and, and set up an appointment. Give our call center a call. Uh, manned live now. We've got four people manning that uh, all the time, and they're very knowledgeable, and they can certainly help you get set up. Cool. And the number is 728-7682. Correct. Um, Missoula Agent Services uh, number, but you can always go online to MissoulaAgentServices.org. So what can people expect when they go into these workshops? So the workshops are going to be uh, a setup on the campus of UM. They'll have some computer labs set up so that people can actually be setting themselves up and signing themselves up and doing some plan checking themselves. And we'll have some volunteers and some staff walking around helping them with that piece. So it's a little less one-on-one, -on -one, a little more of a group setting. What it does is it lets us get to more people because we just don't have enough time in the day to get to all the people and make appointments for the people that we need to. So just a couple of options of ways to get help and uh, we're trying to help as many people as we can and we really encourage that people no matter what they what they're doing or if they think their plans the best take a look every year because it can change and it can save you a significant amount of money yep and speaking of change they only have so much uh, time to actually change their plan right they do open enrollment is only between October 15th and December 7th every year a little bit different with Medicare Advantage which is a plan that replaces uh, traditional Medicare that some people are signed up that can go on a little longer depending on whether or not their plan has changed but we really suggest you get in at that point at least give our staff a call find out when your deadline is uh, some plans are going away some plans are staying Just just get that information. Give us a call. We've got very well trained, very smart staff that are really good at this stuff. Yep, and there's a lot of information. And if you want to learn more, again, MissoulaAgentServices.org, and you can call them at 728-7682. Again, that number is 728-7682. Is Great. there anything else you want to say? You know, just uh, really suggest everybody, regardless of what you think, your plan is good for you. Give us a call. Let's let us take a look. Let's uh, get through there, so we can save you a little bit of money. That can either be a little extra spending money in your pocket, or for some of these people who are living on a fixed income, it can be a definite help. So give us a call. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Rob. I really appreciate it. Great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We appreciate it. So we'll be right back. We still got a lot more show for you guys. So stay tuned. And here's this. Other artists might understand that, but it's like anything you do in life that gives you sort of a feeling of uh, re like outer relaxation. That's what once I'm into a drawing, I just feel like I can separate parts of my brain out. Like one part of my brain can be spacing out about watching a TV show while I draw, and the other, and my hand is sort of ta taking over. Yeah. Um, and that to me is like the best feeling in the world because then you look down and you're like, oh, 
wow, what did I just do? The senators had strongly supported the 1891 and 1897 forest reserve legislation and that Westerners, quote, want these forest reservations continued and he was simply supporting the Fulton Rider because he didn't want the reservation policy to be extended to vast areas of agricultural land. Well, it's kind of a famous episode. Before Roosevelt signed that bill prohibiting him from declaring new forest reserves in six states, he actually declared uh, many forest reserves, including five million acres more in Montana, and then he signed the bill. Um, <clears throat> overall, before he left office in 1909, Roosevelt had added more than 100 million acres to forest reserves, including 15 million acres uh, in Montana, bringing the state's total to 24 million acres. Some were critical of Roosevelt's aggressiveness, but Congress never seriously considered overturning any of his proclamations. This showed, again, public opinion in the West as elsewhere supported that forest reserve movement. In the 1908 national elections, Roosevelt not running again. These large-scale public reservations uh, were simply not an issue in Montana or anywhere else. Good afternoon, Ms. Knowles. Well, Mr. Haskell, I trust you received the telegram I sent with my sincere congratulations. I did. Thank you for your graciousness. You made a great candidate and a formidable opponent. Thank you. Are you looking for Joseph? He should be back at any moment. I came to see you. Oh? Yes, I believe we have a dinner to reschedule. Well then, I would enjoy the chance to get the ear of the new Attorney General. I would enjoy the chance to get to know you better. Are you able to go tonight? I may have prematurely made reservations for us at the new club. I could hardly say no then, could I? I was hoping you could say around 6.30. That sounds fine. Oh, I almost forgot. Yes? Over dinner, I'd like to discuss something serious. Oh? I'd like to ask you if you would consider being my assistant attorney general. No, really? Miss Knowles, are you? Uh, uh. I think I'm speechless. I, I didn't mean to come in here and upset your day. I, I thought it would be a compliment. Of course, every era is an era of change and of continuity. American diplomacy um, has undergone a, a number of major changes over, over many years. And uh, one historian, uh, Robert Beisner at American University, he's retired now, I think, uh, wrote a book called From the Old Diplomacy to the New. And he made some interesting observations. When the United States uh, established its independence, it didn't have a professional diplomatic corps. It was considered European, elite, um, undemocratic. And so America didn't have ambassadors. America had ministers. And over the course of the 19th century, these ministers were sometimes people from elite backgrounds, many of whom have had grand tours of Europe or the world. They knew the societies with which they were interacting. Um, Many of them made actually pretty competent um, representatives of the United States. But at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, American diplomacy began to change. But I have two bosses, right? One boss I, I couldn't stand because he never let me tell my story. Never. And I never got to the point because he was like, I need the number. I need to know why you're not going to do it. And I always I gave great bullet points. I did it. But I just did it because that's my job, right? My other boss. So let me let me tell my story, and then I gave her what she wanted. I would kill for that boss. The other boss, I hated him, and I hate to use the word negative, but I really. But that was so impactful in leaving the industry, like going, wow, you know what? I would have been a so much better, more effective leader if I listened more and talked less. But you're a great point, and and I, I, I passionately remember that. You know, now I'm in the financial world, so my job is to 110% listen first, because I'm to solve other people's problems. Yeah. You are, that's why it's a transfer, it's, everything is, I believe is transferable. Industries are industries, but people are people. People are people, and city council are city council. We didn't have city council on Monday because it was the fifth Monday of the month. Usually they don't have it on uh, holidays, 
proceedings. Um, I don't think they'll have even a um, um, city council meeting before the uh, election day. So I'll let you guys know as it comes around because election day is next uh, Tuesday. Get out the vote. And you go to, I think it's co.missoula.mt.us compared to the city of Missoula's website, which is, once again, ci missoula.mt.us. It's a wonderful website where you can find out more information about what's going on and what's happening. But there is a bunch of committee meetings happening today, as in two committee meetings happen today. The first one, which is currently happening right now or wrapping up, is the public safety and health. Oh, excuse me. Of course, for years now, the Missoula uh, City and County have been studying the status, possibility, improvements of the justice system, including commissions uh, commissioning the jail diversion master plan. So they want to implement this, want to expand on it, but also want to create a criminal justice coordinating council, which is CJCC, which will provide a forum for all stakeholders, leaders from the criminal justice agencies. Gover uh, general governments and communities in Missoula County discuss and prioritize justice and public safety issues. They're talking about jail diversion and some of the concerns that people have with hiring people who are just getting out of jail and just kind of help clarifying about having be being able to uh, have these people becoming uh, functioning members of our uh, Missoula uh, County. Um, so anyways, that's what they're going to be working on today until about 9.30, which is pretty much over. So I'll talk about this a little bit more on Friday um, as, the, as the meeting um, wraps up and it gets available on the website. And also, land use and planning happening right after until about noon today. And that'll pretty much wrap up your uh, committee meetings this morning. And so, of course, they're going to apply the design excellence downtown overlay as well as the corridor overlay as the new district boundaries overlaid. Whew, that's a lot of overlay. Um, on existing base zones, the Proposed overlays will apply to commercial and uh, RM1 through 35 zoning districts along key corridors within the greater downtown master plan area, which basically means that the pro proposed overlay will include modifying some setbacks and establishing new streets uh, wall facade rules. So they're keeping the facade of the walls, um, modifying the amount of a glass requirement and establishing um, blank wall limitation on certain facades. So it's all about the facade. It's all about looking good and trying to uh, match the downtown aesthetic of Missoula while also requiring use of a percentage of natural and traditional, traditional materials, modifying some buildings, mass variations on architectural uh, techniques, establish a new design review process, establish a new design variation process that addresses variations to overlay standards at the staff level. Replacing other existing design standards and new regulatory improvements and incentivize development in overlay areas. So there's a lot of information, but of course, most of this will be going through M uh, MRA, Missoula Redevelopment Agency, which will be uh, implementing a lot of these things for the downtown Missoula Master Plan, which is part of rmissoula.org, where you can find out more information about this. This is where they're going to be updating an, uh, their uh, plan with commercial, uh, mixed residential, and mostly for uh, high-density um, units, which are mostly non-residential and multi-dwelling um, development. So that's kind of like the, have an overlay that, which will encompass the downtown area, and they're going to be talking about this for land use and planning. Um, you may think this is boring. It is boring, but it's also something that is going to uh, see how Missoula is going to look in the next 20 years, just so you guys know. Um, and you can find out more information about this. I just kind of glossed over it because there's a lot of information on this. You can go to ci.missoula.mt.us for more of those meetings and more. If you want to learn more about MCAT, I just want to give a nice uh, announcement out there is uh, Winter Days is going to be kicking off starting tomorrow, and you can start signing up your kids age 9 to 13. And this is uh, a fun little camp. Uh, this is a uh, Basically happening uh, the day after Christmas. I know it's uh, we're like advertising it like way too far in advance, but hey, we just want to let you know that uh, during the winter break, if you want your kids to have a place to be between uh, December 26th and 28th, so it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the day after Christmas, and you want your kids to be in a safe, fun, creative environment, you want them to be doing stuff, um, working with us. It's kind of like our Saturday drop-ins, but a little more expansive in terms of doing stop animation, video making, creativity, and stuff like that. If you want to learn more information, you go to our website at MCAT.org. Oh, look at that nice picture. Look at Mackie. She was in a zombie camp last summer. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you want to learn more about me and my morning show, you can wake up Missoula. Wikisite.com slash wake, wake up Missoula. So nice we made you write it out twice, but you don't write it out the way I said it because I don't know how to talk today. Um, wake up Missoula. All you got to do is uh, Google wake up Missoula. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. All right, guys, I have a video I want to show you guys, and it's pretty awesome. 
it's dub and stuff, and it wouldn't, and it's pretty much Halloween themed. So uh, here is a, another Vincent Price movie called The Bat. And when I come back, I'll talk about events. Doop doop doop. Oh, how do you spell Thero? Oh, who cares? Whatever. This is perfect. <laughs> I get rid of that stuff. Here lies the bat. Threatened with exposure, he destroyed himself. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you forgot that semicolon. Oh, I was rushed. No need to point a gun at me. Huh. Let me see here. You got all sorts of things that you're trying to say to me. What do you exactly are you trying to say? Say it to my face. Here lies the bat. <laughs> Threatened with exposure, he destroyed himself. Oh, I guess that doesn't require a semicolon. Are you the grammar police? Is that why you have a gun on me? You broke into my lab. If you got something to say, say it to my face. Don't just leave a letter. It's kind of weird. A letter helps you contextualize what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. I suppose so. Listen, your chickens are coming home to roost, and you're going... Perhaps it's time for me to take you back to school, after all. Your grammar is... <laughs> no, no, no! No! Oh, yeah, ha ha! Got you now. I don't think so. I'm going to get you... Uh. Oh, my lab! Get Stop it! Lab. I'm going to get <laughs> What? Uh... What? What just happened? Um, uh, this is weird. Hmm. Yeah, that's right, he destroyed himself. I didn't do anything. Later. Man, I can't believe it's... That movie was made in back in 59, and I totally ruined it with dubbing stuff. <laughs> All right, let's move on. I got to talk about some, um, um, why my voice has changed, uh, because it's time for events uh, kicking off. Uh, this is from MissoulaEvents.net. I just have a nice little brief for uh, go oh once over, just kind of tell you about all your Halloween-y um, events that are happening today. Kicking things off, Mizzou Public Library, they just finished up their uh, big greed event last Sunday, but now they're still doing some of their uh, same old, same old events. Um, Empower Place is hosting um, uh, Tiny Tales, which is going to be at the Mizzou Public, I mean, Mizzou Food uh, Bank, which is at 1720 Wyoming Street. So that's happening from around 10.30 a.m. to about 11 a.m. It's a good way for kids to learn about books, while at the same time learn about uh, those cookbooks and recipes and stuff. Zo uh, Frenchtown Branch Storytime. So Frenchtown um, is sponsored by the Missoula Public Library for Storytime, which starts at 10.30 a.m. at the Frenchtown Branch Library. Zombie Brains. Hey, it wouldn't be Halloween without zombies. Let's talk about UM Dis uh, uh, Spectrum Discovery Center. We'll be looking at real life brains. And they'll talk about a little bit more about how the explorer's zombie brain might be, dissect a cow brain, and learn about anatomy as well as honor the work of scientist uh, Virginia Makesner. So, and then, of course, this week in the makerspace is light play. So, uh, climate change and Vietnam informational session. So, Climate change is happening all over the world, and specifically, Vietnam will be at the University of Montana, the College of Forestry and Conservation at the Mansfield Center. The uh, climate change studies opportunity for students to expand their knowledge and experience of climate change in natural ecosystems in the Mekong Delta region in Vietnam. The field-based um, experimentational classes focus on the climate change issue as well as the cultural, ecology, economically, and history of Vietnam along the way. And this is going to be happening um, with Professor Professor uh, Dr. Dr. Jill Beltsky and forestry professor uh, Emetrius, uh, Dr. Stephen um, Siebert, and, and a student of Fulster students of all backgrounds and majors. The program dates are from May 8th through the 31st, and this is where they're going to be talking about this and how you can get more in-depth information will be available at the informational session, which starts at noon today at the University of Montana. Scrabble and Bridge, you can't get enough of that Scrabble and Bridge happening at the Missoula Center uh, around lunchtime. It's a great way for you to enjoy some lunch with some other seniors at the Senior Center and play a little Scrabble and Bridge and just kind of own everybody. Um, stepping on, fall classes. Kearns Aquatic Center is teaching you how to fall the right way and improv in case you are about to fall. So uh, today from 1 to 3 p.m. and also um, most Wednesdays uh, happening in November 
I'll lead it up to December. Stepping On is an evidence-based fall prevention program for adults 60 and over. It's a seven-week period. Participants will learn exercises, methods, and strategies to build self-confidence, change behaviors, and improve decision-making for safer independent living. First and foremost, you never wear slippers ever. That just, this has never happened. No high heels, no slippers, something that's a shoe that has a, a, an attachment in the back where when you put it, your shoe on, you don't have something that slides out, which will cause you to trip. Slippers are one of the biggest causes of tripping. I've had Missoula Agent Service on here many times, and slippers and high heel shoes are one of the biggest things that does not help. So if you can get rid of your slippers, you pretty much reduce your fall exponentially. Just letting you guys know. Uh, special making activity, Halloween stories. Spectrum Discovery Area at 3 p.m. Oh, wow. They're doing a special activity from 3 to 5.30 p.m. It's called Halloween Stories. Celebrate Halloween by telling stories of scary or funny stories using light and shadow with the Light Play Studio in the museum. Um, it's the Jane S. Her uh, Heeman um, Makerspace. So that's going to be happening at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Also, Missoula Mays. Only four days only. This is from noon to 5 p.m. And this is the last day to check it out. And it's the Missoula Maze. It's just on the outskirts of town. You can't miss it. Um, you can go to more information by uh, looking up Missoula Maze at the Google. Halloween movie at Big Sky High School. They're showing Goosebumps around 345 this afternoon. You gotta watch the movie Goosebumps starring Jack Black and other people in that movie as well. Um, <laughs> Missoula Haunted House kids hours are from 4 to 6 p.m. I want to give it a shout out to Root Studio who have been doing uh, Missoula Haunted House all month long and they have kids hours between 4 and 6 p.m. but then they have their official uh, night later that night which happens from 7 p.m. to about 11 p.m. It's Halloween night. There's a lot of things happening uh, and the fourth annual YMCA Hoot and Howl Halloween Bash is kicking off at 4.30 p.m. at the YMCA. So, hey, you go to the Missoula Haunted House, then you pop on over the YMCA, and this is happening um, pretty much a good chunk of the night, which a costume contest starts at 6 p.m., and it's a dollar-suggested donation just to go in. It's suggested, so it's like you don't have to pay. So at the Missoula Family YMCA from 4.30 p.m. to beyond. There's the annual fall carnival at the Valentine Center. It's free community carnival. Games, candy, bounce houses, photo booth, and fun. It's a fun, fun family activities from 6 to 8 p.m. happening tonight. And there's halloween -y, party with your dog. Hey, even your dog gets to have fun on Halloween. I'm excited. Why aren't you? Wagon Indoor Dog Park at 7 p.m. It's uh, $15 for the entire pack. So if you have a bunch of dogs, you can bring them all over down there. If you're a member, you get them free. So it's an indoor uh, dog park for people who um, fear that their dogs are too cold in the winter or um, their their hands are too hot on the asphalt in the summer because hey, they're they're barefoot. Have you ever been barefoot on asphalt? It's it's horrible. But imagine that with a dog. It's even worse. Anyways, uh, Wagon Indoor Dog Park, 7 p.m. They're doing a uh, dog costume contest with prizes and more. And also Mizohana House, 7 p.m. to about 11 p.m. And that pretty much does it for your Wednesday. There's a whole bunch of uh, late night events happening Wednesday night as well. I'll probably just kind of name them real quick for you guys. And these are some of the places to go for your um, um, Halloween night. It's Rocky and Halloween Karaoke at Sunrise Saloon. Uh, Rocky and Karaoke at Dark Horse. Halloween Dance Party at the Badlander with Dead Hipster and Chris Moon. Craptastic Karaoke at the Badlander. Uh, never mind. I guess they just kind of... Um, they kind of mixed it up because there's no karaoke at the Badlander tonight, that's for sure. Because they're going to have some DJ dance party music happening tonight. Much like Charlie Halloween Boogie, it's going to be at Charlie B's. So all sorts of fun activities uh, tonight as well. But I'm going to throw it to an art clip for you guys because this is going to be happening all uh, month long until December 15th. And this is, I believe, at the Zoo Art Museum once again. So here is another installation that Rick Phillip our very own Rick Philp here at MCAT got a little taste of this art exhibit at the Missouri Museum. And when I come back, I'll talk about Thursday events right after this.
nice sweet art that you guys can enjoy at the Missouri Art Museum anytime this month until December 15th. All right, let's talk about some Thursday events. Besides getting Halloweeny this uh, th this. Uh, this today, this uh, today, um, I'm trying to figure out words. I probably should have never said this, but here are some of the items marked down for the November, November kickoff events. Um, just as Halloween ends, uh, the Day of the Dead continues on until November 2nd. Um, Missoula uh, is the uh, Day of Remembrance, so photos of the dead. Um, this is a way where you can bring individuals or families wanting to honor a departed loved one. The experience can bring uh, cathartic, solemn, and um, celebratory or quiet. Uh, they ask that you bring an item that connects you to your person that you're honoring. Um, clothing is also fantastic. And this is going to be at the 126 East Broadway and it's Photos of the Dead. Um, annual book sale. Hey, Heritage Hall, every year the uh, uh, Historic Museum at Fort Missoula hosts a annual book sale and it's $1.50 per vertical inch of book. So check it out. It's going to be four days from November 1st to the 4th and it's a book sale. Why not? It's really cheap. It's easy. And these are all books that they donate. And they have so many books that they, that they uh, refuse any donations until after this event. And ever, there's a waiting list for donations. So there's a lot of books. So you have a lot of choices pretty much all this week. Spectrum, uh, Spectrum Discovery Center is doing Science of Sound starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, Maker Space starting at 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, Lego Club is going to be doing uh, their Lego Club. But, of course, Maker Space is happening from 10 to 1 p.m. and then 2 to 6 p.m. at the Musical Public Library. They have a 3D printer. It's awesome. Um, Poets of the Dead starting at 7 p.m. at Western Cider. Uh, this is the eves of the dead poet Cheryl Nothy, Zan Books, um, Jenny Grail. A bunch of poets are coming together, and they're doing um, poetry for the dead and the living. And, hey, if you're interested in going to a volleyball game tomorrow night, Grizz Volleyball is going to be at the West Auxiliary Gym, and can, can support the Grizz Volleyball team take on Northern Arizona. And also, MCT's Sister Act is playing all week long. This is the last week to check out MCT's Sister Act, the musical. Um, even though the original Sister Act mo movie was technically a musical, but this is the musical with dancing and fun, extravagant colors, all sorts of wonderful things happening. Sister Act, the musical, and it will be ending on November 4th. MCT, Missoula Community Theater Center for Performing Arts. It's a great uh, place to support your local theater here in Missoula. All right, so those are pretty much it for a lot of your Thursday events. Mo most of your events that are happening are on Wednesday for all your halloween -y events. Uh, if you're interested in going out and about on a Thursday night, they have open mic at uh, Green Alternative Dispensary, Narconics Anonymous, happening at the University of Montana um, every Thursday at 7 p.m. They have... Let's see, Sister Act, Dance Up Close at the University of Montana, which is a dance um, starting at 7.30 p.m. I believe it's in the Massacre Theater. Gypsy Swing Dance at the Downtown Dance Collective. And they have Tyler Barham at the Sunrise Saloon. He's playing some country acoustic music. So those are some of the events happening tonight as well. And you can find out more information by going to MissoulaEvents.net. All this list of things that you can enjoy all through here. MissoulaEvents.net. So simple. Um, you just have to write it down. <laughs> All right, thanks guys for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful couple of days. It's raining outside, but hey, enjoy some of the indoor fun. There's a lot of indoor fun that you guys can do. It's Halloween. Get a chance to be out and about because it always seems to rain on Halloween. I don't know why, but it always, for my history, it's probably not rained on Halloween maybe once or twice in my 30 years on this <laughs> earth and in, in this Missoula. <laughs> so anyways, thanks for joining me and uh, for Wicked Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph. Have a good and wonderful day. Mm -hmm.